So today I'm talking with um, Christopher Clifton. And I met Chris a few years ago when we were both doing a um, course at TAFE around um, printmaking. And I leant very heavily on you when I first started. <laughs> <laughs> All those skills, my lord. So tell me a bit about you, Chris. Well, I'm fairly, um, I've kind of spent a long time floating between kind of career directions and what I actually wanted to do. Um, I started doing art probably, oh, well, I was going to do a fine arts degree when I left high school, um, but then kind of just got in a bit of a rut and I thought, oh, I don't want to sort of do an arts degree and be like this for three or four years. So I, I just went into geography and kind of moved on into environmental management and worked in the conservation sector. And, and it was only having kids four years ago that kind of allowed me to, oh, I think, oh, I can actually get back into my art again and, and really sort of make a go of it. So, mm. yeah. Tell us a little bit about your piece that you put in about Hinka. Why did you choose her? So I came across Hinka um, quite a few years ago and she just, oh, she just, I loved the way her, the way that she sort of took, took an old image and then really subverted it and kind of changed it and, and just applied just quite a, just a simple process of the, just the stitching on the, on the images. And I was just, I was just really liked the aesthetic of it. So I was really drawn to it. And I was kind of new at the time to even the whole idea of textiles. So it was mm -hmm. kind of like, it was really fun to sort of look at her work. And then, yeah. And then like, I just kind of started to slowly incorporate stitch into my work. And then, then you asked me if I was interested in, in um, participating in this show. And I thought, oh, was just Hinka was the first name that came to mind. I was like, I just loved her work. So I thought, well, I've got to do it on her. So mm -hmm. Yeah, it was definitely a challenge because it was not not usually my style of work. So it was quite a challenging piece to do. So tell us about the process that you went through. So I I wanted to incorporate, um, at first I thought I was going to incorporate too much. I was kind of getting a bit complicated. And um, so I just stripped it back and I was like, well, um, I'll do an etching because I'm a printmaker. So I thought I'll, I've got to have an uh, form of etching in there so I first the first thing I did was just found some images of her online because obviously I can't meet her because she lives in, in the Netherlands but I found the one that sort of probably worked the composition I had in mind and I uh, started some drawings and turned them into a copper plate aquatint etching so um so it was just a process of just a simple line drawing to start off with and then I ended up doing um the aquatint and doing the spit bite, which kind of gives you that lovely kind of like almost washy watercolor look. Um, so I thought I'd got that down and I, thought, I was like, oh, do I stitch onto the paper directly or, but I thought I've been playing around with collage a lot lately. So um, I sort of found an old, a really old postcard of the Dutch sort of fields of poppies and I thought, I mean, of um, tulips. So I thought, oh, I'll kind of incorporate photography and collage and, and then kind of, yeah, just sort of stitch it all together. And originally the whole background was kind of completely different. And um, I tried a bit of Photoshopping and it was just, yeah, it just didn't work. So I thought, well, I'm a printmaker and I, I'm constantly putting felt blankets on top of my work. So I thought, oh, why not do the opposite and put paper on the felt? So I just took an old felt blanket that I had and and then just sort of, yeah, stitched and stitched and glued and collaged the sort of work together. But it was really enjoyable doing the the actual French knots because the I mean I, they were really challenging to start off with especially as a someone completely new to textile art but, um, I certainly I really liked the sort of meditative kind of process of doing it and um, it was it was really strange as well because I was like I had in mind this color palette it was just a simple three colors and it was just kind of going along and I was just like uh, I just, I don't know, I felt like, and then suddenly all these other colours started coming in and I was just like, why not? I'll just go with it. So yeah, I yeah. kind of <laughs> increased the colour palette and it was just, yeah, it was really fun just kind of putting them all over the place and yeah, I enjoyed it. And did you contact Tinker and show her the artwork that you've done? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So I asked her, first of all, permission. I was like, is it okay if I do a portrait of you as a sort of really, really novice to um, textile art? And um and she was like, yeah, she was, she was flattered to kind of be thought of in that way. So, yeah, she was really happy. And 
um yeah and so i sent her a picture of the work and she seems to like it so wonderful yeah. Well, congratulations, and I'm so delighted that you're part of Aim the Archies. It's such a beautiful exhibition that we've um, got going here at Timeless Textiles. So thank you, Chris, for that. Thank you. No, I'm really, I'm really, really excited to be part of it, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to coming down next week and uh, seeing all the works. <laughs>